So let's go ahead and first make a, a single mesh face. You can do that from mesh, mesh primitives, 3D face. We're just going to click, I'm going to click on snapping to my grid to make a simple mesh face. All right. If I got a shaded view, we'll see that mesh face. All right. Now this mesh face only has uh, four edges, one face, and four vertices. You can turn them on through the control point uh, dialog button here. So these are my four control points that are my vertices. So I have a simple mesh object, right? And we're going to apply uh, tension forces to this. Okay, so the first step is let's get our mesh into Grasshopper. So we're going to go to the Geometry tab and pull open the mesh object. Params, Geometry. This is our mesh container. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and set one mesh. All right, so now I've got this mesh selected. We can see if I put my mouse over this object, it says referenced mesh V4 F1. That's four vertices, one face. And as we go, I'm going to be grouping these um, objects and naming them so we know what's going on in our file. We have a nice, clean, organized file. And this is the input mesh label that I'm going to apply to it by grouping it. That's also, besides control G, that's edit group. All right. So now I've got my mesh in uh, inside of Grasshopper, right? And if we were to look at the um, some of these shapes that we had before from the uh, tension systems, right? Well, notice how there's a there's smooth transitions between all the different uh, forces that are being applied to this particular object, right? Now, in order to see something smooth like that, the first step we have to do is take this low resolution or coarse mesh and divide it into smaller segments so that the forces can translate through uh, this grid, right? So let's go ahead and um, bounce over to the kangaroo tab. And one of those new user objects is quad divide. This divides all quadrilateral faces of a mesh into smaller quads. So we're going to drop that into the canvas and notice that it asks for the mesh to divide and how many divisions we want. So we're going to go ahead and take our mesh, drop it in there, and I'm going to use a panel from Param's input as a way to specify how many divisions I want to have in my mesh. All right, this is my mesh divisions, mesh divs. Okay, now what I see here is, uh, first of all, it looks um, kind of jagged because I have both the original mesh and the subdivided one. So I'm going to go ahead and take my first one, uh, right-click on the canvas and turn the preview off, right? I also have the original mesh in shaded view in Rhino, so I'm going to turn my perspective to wireframe. And now I'm not seeing any in, uh, internal divisions to my mesh. So what we're going to do is make sure that in Grasshopper you hit Control M or Display Mesh Edges, Preview Mesh Edges. So now we can see that our mesh, which uh, we specified having five divisions in either direction, now has all of its edges shown. Right, so t five is good, but for our purposes, since this is going to be the kind of primary input to our file, let's go ahead and uh, make it a little bit more uh, fine uh, in terms of uh, the divisions by specifying ten. Okay, so now once we have uh, all those divisions, we're going to take these edges, each one of these edges of the mesh, and turn them into a spring. Remember that the kind of key. Uh, fundamentals for what we'll be doing in finding equilibrium shapes is applying pressure to physical objects. And our physical objects in this case are going to be almost for entirely today springs. So uh, how do we go from a mesh to individual springs? Well we could take this apart, find each edge, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, and uh, manually make the spring uh, for each line segment. or um, again, under those uh, utilities under Kangaroo, we can take a single mesh and turn it into uh, a network of springs by doing springs from mesh, turns all edges of a mesh into spring. 
super convenient, right? This asks for the mesh, what the spring stiffness is, and what the rest length factor is. And this is going to be a multiplier uh, relative to the original rest length. All right, so let's go ahead and plug our mesh into, um, into from M to mesh. The stiffness we can leave as default. And uh, let's specify a rest length factor. So let's make a slider by double clicking on the canvas. We'll do a shortcut. Let's do 0.05 less than 1.0 less than 2.5. What this allow me to do is say, do I want it to be in tension, which would be less than 1 or allow it to stretch beyond its rest length, its initial rest length, by going uh, above one. All right, so uh, this is going to be a tension system, so we want it to be at least below one. So I'll make it just slightly below. All right, so if I connect this up, we'll see that uh, from the panel coming out, that the utility object here, springs from mesh, made a bunch of springs for us, right? As opposed to line segments, which are just regular geometry, it made the physical objects for us, right? It took each line segment and turned it into a spring. Okay, great. So um, with what we have, let's go ahead and start to build out the uh, inputs for our physics engine, which is under Kangaroo, Kangaroo Subtab, Kangaroo Physics. And any of the files that we want to simulate, simulate will have to have one of these physics engines in it. This is the kind of main object that allows us to uh, understand that the solutions should be, under, should be calculated through time. And it stores each state and then uh, calculates the next one for us uh, using physics as the uh, underlying principles. All right, so the force objects, that's going to be our set of springs that we just created. We need to specify some anchor points, which um, in our case, we want just anchor points around the four corners. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to turn the preview off of my Kangaroo Physics Engine so I can see a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and make four points around the four corners of my initial mesh. And it's important that these are rhino points because we want to be able to, while the simulation is running, manipulate them uh, for the, to change their location. All right, so let's go ahead and bring those into, uh, into Grasshopper. So we're going to go back to our params tab under geometry, point. And this object is going to be our input anchors. All right, set multiple points, choose our anchors. They now have a blue crosshair on them. All right, and they're all four points are in, and now we can drop that right into the anchor points input. Okay, so we have all of the initial state, like all the geometry and forces are set up, right? But now we need to tell the physics engine in, through Kangaroo that it should uh, refresh the solution every frame, right? So let's go ahead and uh, drop in the two other things that are going to be required, which one is going to be the Boolean toggle that allows us to reset our simulation. And the other one is going to be the timer, right? So if we go to the input tab and we go to uh, Boolean toggle, this will allow us to reset the simulation, true or false. I'm going to start it at true. Then I'm also going to go to utility and get the timer object, right? And this is a special object that allows us to um, not connect through a kind of wire input or a node, but we're going to take the output of this object and draw essentially to the center of any object we want to refresh the state of at this interval. Right? So one second is okay, but even better if we right click and say interval 20 milliseconds will be something faster. Okay. Whenever we do that, uh, we're going to get a new icon in our system tray. It may be hidden in some of the more recent versions of Windows. If you open up this uh, little drop uh, kind of fly out button, you may see your check, your green check mark or uh, red uh, blocking sign that looks kind of like, like that. Uh, you'll see that icon there. You can always just drag it onto this tray to make it uh, remember that it should be visible. All right, 
So uh, if we were to uh, turn the preview for our physics engine back on, make sure that our timer is enabled and that our toggle is set to false, we'll see that something happens. If I move my anchor points around, I'll see a bunch of uh, grasshopper points show up in the scene, but what I'm not getting is anything visible in between them. All right. So the way that the physics engine's working is that it's actually, I'm going to hit true to uh, reset the simulation and make sure that my timer is turned off here. All right, the way that's working is that it's going to be actually vi uh, showing, if this is visible, all of the particles, right? Any point object or a point that is a part of any line that becomes a spring are all going to be understood as particles by default, even if we don't define them manually as such. So what it's going to visualize is just those particles, right? So it's working right now, but we're not seeing exactly what we want to see. So the, the thing that we need to do in order to see, let's say, the same mesh before and after it's simulated would be to use this geometry input within this object so that the, um, so that the points of the mesh go along with the particles. And then we can then use the points that are moved from the simulation to reconstruct the mesh. So we're going to have, uh, before the simulation, starts, we'll have the initial state of the geometry, and then we're going to be showing the current state of the simulated geometry afterwards by reconstructing the mesh as it was, but with the new vertex positions. All right, so um, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go to the mesh tab, and under analysis, we're going to decompose the mesh that we created by subdividing it into smaller faces. All right, so We'll take this mesh and we'll decompose it. And this is going to give us the vertices, faces, vertex colors, and vertex normals of our mesh, right? All the different parts. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the vertices through the geometry input. After it's, or while it's simulating, it will be, um, come, it will come out from geometry out. And then we can reconstruct the mesh, which we would do by going to primitive under the mesh tab, mesh, the geometry out, we'll go into V and we'll connect the face commands, which are the same, should be the same before and after, across the physics engine, right? So our geometry goes in, it gets simulated, it comes out, and we reconstruct the mesh with the same face commands, but the new vertices. All right, now um, this is getting a little bit uh, disorganized uh, in my uh, opinion, so I don't like all the crossing wires. So what I'm going to do is uh, right-click this F here, say that my wire display should go to faint. That way this can go wherever I want it to. All right, anchors like that. It's looking pretty good. All right, now with that, let's go ahead and um, and give this a shot and see what we get. All right, so I'm going to set my toggle back to false, which will allow it to uh, continue to simulate, release my timer block down here in the system tray. And now you can see that um, my preview is kind of dancing around because um, it's really close to being the same mesh at this point as it was in the original case. So if I move my anchor points, right, we'll now see this mesh kind of dance around. And at the, at the moment, I'd have to stretch my anchor points really far in order to get something that looks really tensioned. An alternative is, and it might be easier to see if I turn all this middle section off by right-clicking on the canvas and saying preview off. An alternative would be that if I undo here and go back to my original condition, would be to move this slider closer to zero. So now I'm saying that all of the uh, springs that are internal to the mesh, they want to be about half of their original length, right? And that will automatically put the shape into tension. 